This video is going to compare and contrast trial courts with appeals courts. Uh, and trial courts are usually what you think of when you think of a courtroom. Uh, they're courts that listen to testimony, consider the evidence in a case, and decide the facts in both criminal and civil cases. So in other words, uh, if somebody's charged with a crime and the case is not resolved prior to court, they go to a trial court. If somebody sues somebody else and the case cannot be settled, then they end up in a trial court. Uh, on the other hand, appeals courts are courts in which decisions made in lower courts are challenged. And uh, really, I could say appeals courts are the courts in which decisions made in the trial court are challenged uh, because that's where it all begins. But there are multiple layers of appeals courts, especially depending on what state uh, you live in. But there definitely uh, is it, uh, there is at least uh, a second layer of appeals court, uh, regardless of what state that you uh, live in. And so, you know, the question is when we compare these, you know, what is being determined? Well, in a trial court, uh, it depends on whether it's a criminal or a civil case. If it's a criminal case, we're determining guilt or innocence. And so the prosecution puts on a case and the jury determines whether they're going to vote guilty or not guilty. In a civil case, we're basically deciding who wins the lawsuit. So the court can either find for uh, the plaintiff, or the person who sued, or the defendant, the person being sued. Now, it's completely different in an appeals court. Uh, in an appeals court, they are simply deciding, was there a mistake made by the trial court that needs to be corrected? The simplest example I can give you is when... Uh, a defense attorney believes that the police conducted an illegal search. And when that is done, uh, because of something known as the exclusionary rule, any evidence found during an illegal search is supposed to be inadmissible in a trial, meaning that it can't be uh, admitted as evidence, it can't be heard or viewed by the jury. Now, if a trial court judge allows such evidence to be entered into a trial, that is an appealable issue, meaning that if the defendant's convicted, they can challenge their conviction based on the fact that illegally seized evidence was allowed into the trial. So that would be the question that the appeals court would uh, answer. They would decide only, was the search legal or illegal? Okay, And so they are not going to decide guilt or innocence. All right, they're simply going to determine whether the search was legal or illegal. They're just going to look at that specific issue. And so the possible results differ because of this. In a trial court, if it's a criminal case, the possible result is punishment. And we you know, kind of went through that uh, in the previous topic. In a civil case, it's a remedy, Okay, whether that be money or some other remedy. Now, appeals courts, though, remember, are not determining guilt or innocence in a criminal case. They are not determining whether the plaintiff or, deter or defense wins the lawsuit. All the appeals court is determining is, was there an error made? Okay. Now, if they determine there was not an error made at the trial court, then the trial court decision is upheld, and whatever they said was final. So, if somebody was found guilty of a crime, and they claim that there was an illegal search, and that evidence should have been thrown out. The appeals court hears the case, and they disagree. And they say, no, the search was legal. And so they uphold the trial court decision. That means that the conviction stands. Okay. On the other hand, if they believe an error was made, in this case, they believe the search was illegal, that doesn't mean that the person goes free. It simply means that they get another trial. But what will be different is that when the new trial is held, the mistake will be fixed. In our example, that means that the person could be put on trial, but they will now be put on trial without the tainted evidence being admitted. So let's say that it was a drug case, and the case is uh, simply the person's been charged with possession of a narcotic, and the search was illegal in which the narcotic was found, and so now the narcotics are out. Okay, The prosecution may choose not to even prosecute again. So though the appeals court didn't find the person not guilty, Basically, uh, they take the heart of the prosecution case away and they don't even re-prosecute. Sometimes, whatever's removed, uh, the government will look at and say, well, you know, that's tough that it was removed, but we're going to go ahead and put the person on trial anyways. But the point is, the appeals court doesn't free somebody completely. It just says that, yes, there was a mistake made, and so there's going to be a new trial. 
Now, in terms of who's present in a trial court uh, and an appeals court, in a trial court, first of all, we have the trial judge. Okay. Secondly, we have a jury. We have the lawyers. We have the defendant, whether it's a criminal or civil case. In a uh, civil case, we have the plaintiff, who is the uh, person suing. And then we have witnesses. And that's the key thing, that we have witnesses there. Because an appeals court is very different. An appeals court uh, only has the judges. And I say appellate judges in plural because there's always an odd number of judges because all decisions are made by majority vote and then the lawyers and that's it uh, the defendant usually is not there the plaintiff in a civil case usually is not there there are no witnesses to be heard there's no jury because the judges make the decision there's no testimony okay what happens simply is both sides file a written brief which is basically their side of the story and then they go up in front of the judges and they each have an allotted time in which they uh, get to plead their case so to speak uh, while being peppered by questions uh, or with questions by the judges and then the judges retire and make their decision based on majority vote okay so there's no witnesses there to testify because they're not deciding guilt or innocence they're deciding whether there was a legal mistake made uh, here's a little video clip uh, that kinda shows uh, how this could happen in a case and and uh, this is a criminal case and years later the defendant finally is granted an appeal so let's just watch this video clip the youngest murder suspect ever charged in the state of Washington is getting a new trial 13 year old Craig Sorger was stabbed and beaten to death in Anafreda Park two of his classmates who were just 12 at the time were convicted of the killing but today, the Court of Appeals ruled that Evan Savoy was denied his right to a public trial and ordered the case back to Grant County. KXY 4's Melissa Luck has covered this case for eight years. She's here now with more on today's decision. Well, Nadine, I remember talking to people in Efreda the night after Craig was murdered. It's a case that shocked that small town then and the nation as they saw two young kids charged with a horrific crime. Craig Sorger was stabbed more than 30 times. His autopsy picture shown in court showed a little boy's face frozen in fear. Evan Savoy and Jake Aiken had been playing in the park with Craig the night he died. They said he fell out of a tree and they got scared and ran away and that someone else must have come along later and stabbed Craig. Because the defense could have implicated the Sorgers in their son's murder, they were given their own attorney. And when the family's private records were discussed in court, the judge closed the courtroom to the public. The appeals court said today that violates Savoy's right to a public trial and said he should be retried. Today, Evan Savoy's mom told me she always knew this day would come. My son is what's kept me confident. He kept saying this day would come, and it did. And all I can say is I am so thankful those judges saw what everybody else seen. And I hope this time he gets a fair trial. Evan Savoy turns 21 in a few weeks. He's serving his time at the Airway Heights Correction Center. His earliest scheduled release date before this decision was 2028. It's not clear yet when a new trial will begin. The Grant County prosecutor did not return my phone calls today. I'm Melissa Lott, KXOY4, HD News. So just so you understand how this works, uh, the defendant in this case was found guilty in a trial years before. And the issue that his attorney appealed the case uh, upon was the idea that the courtroom was closed, which violated his right to a public trial, which is found in the Bill of Rights. And so, though the appeals court ruled in his favor, that doesn't mean that he goes free. It simply means that he gets a new trial. Now, this isn't necessarily going to help the defendant that much. Uh, he does get a new trial, but at the same time, no evidence has been removed. It's simply now his trial can't be closed to the public. But uh, for a criminal defendant, any new trial is a good trial. And so that's why uh, the mother of the defendant was happy. But, you know, that's the point. Uh, trial and appeal courts, what do they do? In the trial court, they determine guilt and innocence uh, in a criminal case or which side wins a lawsuit. The appeals court merely determines whether or not there was a legal mistake made. In this case, they said there was in, the, uh, in terms of 
closing the trial off to the public, which is a violation of his rights. So we're going to continue to talk about this, and we're going to look at uh, specific Supreme Court cases and their uh, decisions, the precedent set, and this will become more clear. But this is just a basic introduction, so feel free, if confused in the future, to return to this video so that you can understand the difference between trial and appeal courts.